Kevin here. I'm in Siddlesham in West Sussex and I'm just on the entrance of Church Lane. And with the name of Church Lane it gives you a clue as to what I'm going to be looking for. And here we are, Church Lane. And I'm going to be heading down here and we've got these beautiful thatched cottages down here with the lovely flowers in the garden there's roses and there's some I saw some buddleia just now which is over this side and you would expect to see butterflies all over the buddleia but there's nothing no butterflies whatsoever we've got these which looks like a copper beech tree and there's a car coming in my direction which is not handy when I'm filming and again another beautiful cottage just there and it's cream walls and light grey shutters with a rather lovely entrance porch to it there we've got the flowers just lining the stone walls which are down through and I've noticed just now that a lot of these cottages have got fantastic names this one Little Owlswick but they're, it's just, they're just charming it's a lovely little area they've all got these lovely boundary walls or hedges this one here, the old cottage. And again, here to my left hand side, another lovely old cottage with thatch roof, construction of stone, a few flints, and, and brick around the windows there. Fuchsia hedging. I love these fuchsia hedges. This was my late mother-in-law's favourite thing to have around her garden and we've got beach hedging here which is a mixture of copper beech and just ordinary beech trees but again you wander down here and there's this cottage here which I noticed earlier on an idyllic little cottage on this lane on church lane and I love the name of this cottage Faith's Cottage that lovely porch with the rambling roses going along the top and again another another thatch cottage there that one's Churchgate Cottage and I'm coming up to the entrance of the church gates now and in there is Commonwealth War Graves, which I'd like to try and find. Just make my way through the gate. And here we are now into the, the grounds of St Mary Our Lady of Siddlesham. And here just in front of me, this rather impressive war memorial it's got the lovely pansies all the way around the bottom all different colors absolutely charming and it looks like the memorials made of granite and again over here we've got this huge buddleia and again not one not one butterfly on it but when I had a wander around here just now I was looking at all the different gravestones and this is one that st stuck out to me with this again looks like a, a, a granite of some sort and quite quite see the name Horatio St Horatio Sterney Colston younger brother of Trinity House died October the 4th 1932 age 45 
they that go down to the sea in ships that I can't see that do business in the great waters oh, I can't read it at the bottom there unfortunately I'm sorry about it which is a shame here we go now. another copper beach just above me and then we come into this rather large expanse of of the graveyard what what I, I, I usually like to see a graveyard that is neatly trimmed but actually this is lovely you've got some wild area with all the wild flowers but then you've got this these moan areas weaving through the churchyard I'm not sure what this this tree is here it's, it, it's got the copper look of a beach looks like an elm is it an elm tree I'm not sure but there is lots of um, ash trees around I've noticed in this cemetery just have a bit more of a wander around the cemetery before I go and look at the church another wild area here with the lovely pink flowers I don't know I think, are they a campion or something then you've got another section here which is well maintained and I think this is where um, people's ashes are buried all through here away there just in front of me a big yew tree so you've got a, a, a fair mixture of different types of trees all through here you've got a lovely hydrangea over there with its pink flowers but as I say there's so many different headstones one bit I did notice earlier on and I think it's this bit just in front of me the headstones seem very very cramped together almost as if there's not enough room for a grave now I'm not sure which way these th this particular row graves go but they seem very very close together huge tomb here and I can't make out the name on there but I've noticed there's a couple of lovely little areas where they've got the little box hedges all around which is rather lovely I do like that that's that's super but there in front of me just there an oak tree big oak tree but I, I don't think I've ever seen so many um, ash trees in the cemetery before I'm just walking down the footpath into St Mary's Our Lady's Church in Siddlesham which is just in front of me now and it was built late 12th century or early 13th century it's, uh, it's English style but it's built of rubble and brick, tiled roof, got very basic simple windows, we've got one there with an arch, but they're leaded like windows, all the way around the church, I've had a bit of a wander around, you've got this brick porch, and it's got a, a bit of a tie bar on each side of the porch and it's got the soldier bricks or well, the, the soldier bricks would normally be vertical but these have been laid horizontally you've got three rows there it's like a, acting as a lintel and you've got the little gargoyle there just above the light and you've got the boot scraper there at the bottom but as I wander around, you can see it's, as I said just now, it's a tiled building. Or tiled roof, and you've got the bell tower there. 
let's say it's, it's, it's mainly of stone and, and rubble. There used to be, I think there used to be obviously a, um, some sort of an entrance doorway there and one at the side there because they've been they've been filled in with more brick rubble uh, stone to fill them in but you've got the soldier bricks there which I was talking about above that on that archway there but it's in the shape of a cruciform church let's come back around this way and you can see where that one there on this end is uh, been rendered over. Do they call that ashlar covering? I think that's a huge window with the leaded lights there. Leaded light windows are okay, but they do close out a lot of light from the rooms inside or the areas inside. Then you come back round this way. You can see where this has all been rendered in. But again, they've got this a, a new building on the side here. And I've got very little information, to be honest, because this was a very last minute decision to come and have a look. But again, I, they do these additional buildings, but I really don't think that this goes with the old church at all it just looks too too modern but interestingly and I've never seen this on a church before you've got the two dormer style windows coming out of the the church uh, the, the roof there which is very unusual I'll just keep wandering round. Got lovely lavender all, all the way round here, but you can see how this is just a, such a modern building. It must be some sort of a meeting room for local people, I should think, the churchgoers. But these very modern footpaths going down through here. I, d I, I really don't like it very much at all. But if I, as I back away down this footpath, it gives you a better view of the of the tower. Again, another doorway there that was blocked up some time ago. And as I tilt up, you can see to the top, you've got the louvered wind um, uh, areas at the top. As I said, I've done very little research because this was very last last minute decision to come here. I was in this area anyway, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to come here. It's very, very windy today. It's very overcast as well. Rather, rather a fascinating church, the way it's all been done. That's that doorway I was on about that's been bricked up or blocked up. But then there's another doorway here, which I would imagine is, is not used at all. It doesn't look as if that's been open for a long, long time. Well, as I walk, as I walk along the back of the church, it seems that there were two chantry chapels and possibly two aisles built in the 14th century. There was also a vestry to the north of the uh, chapel area. The north chapel and part of the chancel were allowed to fall into ruin probably in the 16th century but were rebuilt using much of the original material shortly after 1660. But as you can see it's very very sort of plain looking church, I think. 
but with lots you know but there are lots of, of interesting features and you've got the yew, tre yew trees in the cemetery as well and as I just move round back down the footpath towards the exit and to, to the end of this video for today so I'll just move round this way show you one or two of these headstones while I'm walking round here there's one there interesting it's got a hole right through the top but it looks as if something might have fallen out of that one just there Anyway, this will be Kevin finishing off his video for the day. As I say, very impromptu. I was in this area, so I thought, you know what, let's go make a video. Anyway, I'll catch you on another one. Bit of a rambler, this one. I'm sorry about that. But I'll catch you on the next one, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.